Rappi concludes, and I would concur, that since only a small percentage of the Earth's surface obeys even a significant portion of the geologic column, it becomes an overall exercise of gargantuan special pleading and imagination for the evolutionary uniformitarian paradigm to maintain there ever were geologic periods. It's an idea imposed on the record of creation and the flood, and it doesn't fit, but they don't let you know that they're using circular reasoning to build up a phony column that is contradicted by the facts, and they're letting their theory sit in judgment on the facts. In real science, the facts sit in judgment on any hypothesis. But they love their hypothesis. They don't want to give it up for anything. So they just hope you don't ask these type of questions. Now, if man and dinosaurs were created together, you might ask, why don't we ever find human and dinosaur fossils buried together? Human artifacts and things like that buried in lower layers of the geological rock strata. Well, we have found a few dozen examples of this over the past few centuries. Uh, it's even re it reported in some secular books, uh, like Ancient Man, the Handbook of Puzzling and Artifacts by William Corliss, and Forbidden Archaeology by Thompson and Cremo. But here's one of the most spectacular cases. Ten human skeletons, five males, three females, one infant, buried in solid, undisturbed, homogeneous Dakota sandstone within the same layer that runs continuously across Utah, even transcontinental, and runs right through Vernal, Utah. Dinosaur National Monument, chock full of dinosaur bones. Now, this would be expected to be rare, but it wouldn't be unheard of if the Bible is true. I just asked people to look at this video or DVD with a halfway open mind and see what you would think if you hadn't been brainwashed by evolution. Now, God made them, according to Jesus Christ, male and female at the beginning of the creation. But we can ask this question. On what day were dinosaurs created? Okay, I wonder if our battery's going dead. There we go. On what day were dinosaurs created? Some people say, oh, we don't know. We don't know anything about dinosaurs. The Bible is strangely silent about dinosaurs. Well, actually, we know what day they were created on because the Word of God reveals that he created all land-dwelling animals on day six. Dinosaurs are land-dwelling animals. That means they were not only created in the same week as Adam and Eve, but on the very same day. Now, if men and dinosaurs were there from the beginning, the very same day of creation, we might ask the question, why was the word dinosaur reinvented in 1841 by Sir Richard Owen in England? Well, because they rediscovered dinosaurs as fossils. Now, Sir Richard Owen was a Christian man of science. He should have known better. He should have read the Bible and said, hey, these creatures must have been here from day six. Maybe the ancient scholars and scientists named them already, and I believe they did. I believe the word dinosaur is found more than 25 times in the Bible, but not by the name dinosaur, for the same reason we don't find the word television or computer, or space shuttle in the Bible. These words weren't invented until after the Bible was written. And this word dinosaur was invented in the middle of the 1900s. So it wasn't around when the Bible was written, but there were ancient words for these creatures. The ancients used the words draco in the Greek and tanim in the Hebrew. This Hebrew word tanim used more than two dozen times in the Old Testament. Draco, from which we get our English word dragon, that goes way back in antiquity. Every nation, tribe, and tongue has stories about dragons that sound like dinosaurs. Even Carl Sagan said, oh, boy, they sound so much like dinosaurs. We're going to have to give them some kind of an answer because it sounds like the Bible, and we sure don't want to believe the Bible. We'll look at that closer a little bit later. But Draco, from which we get the English word dragon, that is how that word tanim was translated by the King James Bible almost in every instance. And that was in 1611. The Astoria Animalium, a secular zoology textbook, not a fairy tale book, said that dragons were real. They were going extinct by the end of the 1500s. They had gone extinct in Europe, but they were real animals. Learned scholars who had studied would have known that, and the scholars at the King James translated Tanim as dragon, the old world term, I believe, for dinosaur. Now, books that deal with dinosaurs from a correct scriptural and scientific point of view, Dinosaurs by Zion and Dinosaurs of Eden, both very good. Dinosaurs in the Bible by Dr. Kent Hoven, very excellent video for the younger children, Marty and the Last Dinosaur, and Marty's Fossil Adventure. And for the teenagers, Creation Adventure Team, award-winning videos actually keeps the attention of teenagers, a minor miracle in and of itself. <laughs> and for the youngest children, we have A is for Adam, and what really happened to the dinosaurs? Now that's a good question. What happened to the dinosaurs? There are scores of different theories purporting to explain what happened to the dinosaurs, why they disappeared. Some of them are pretty exotic. One of them is that all the dinosaurs used to eat a certain laxative plant. And when that plant went extinct, all the dinosaurs perished from fatal constipation. <laughs> well, <coughs> I don't know if you can think of a better theory than that. But 
The big theory today is that an asteroid or comet hit the Earth, kicked up dust, got dark and cold. The cold-blooded dinosaurs couldn't handle it. They went extinct. But we have crocodiles, alligators, Komodo dragons. These are supposed to be, date back even before some of the dinosaurs, and they're still here. The asteroid didn't wipe them out. I wonder why. See, man's theories don't always explain all the facts. So instead of man's theories, man who wasn't there, let's go to God's Word, who was there, and he tells us there was a great catastrophe on purpose, and that was the great Genesis flood, and that's why there's billions of dead things buried in sedimentary rock layers laid down the water all over the earth, including dinosaurs. Now, some Christians go, oh, that must be it. God must have said, Noah, those dinosaurs are too big. Just leave them off the ark. They'll go extinct. That'll be the end of the dinosaurs. But the only way we know what happened is to let God tell us, because he was there and we weren't. God specifically commanded Noah to take seven of each kind of the male and the female of the clean animals, so long as they were land-dwelling, air-breathing beasts of the earth that breathe through their nostrils. But even of the unclean, and that includes all types of reptiles, that would include dinosaurs, even of the unclean, at least two of each, the male and the female, if they're land-dwelling air breathers that breathe through their nostrils. Now, how many dinosaur types would Noah be allowed to leave off the ark according to that explicit command? Not one. He would have had to have taken them aboard. So we should always see pictures of dinosaurs and pterosaurs going aboard Noah's ark. That's God's revelation. Now, some people say, oh, they're too big, they wouldn't fit. But actually, not all dinosaurs were big. And even the ones that got very big started out small. So you take them while they're still small. Uh, most reptiles can reproduce at the young juvenile age. They don't have to be anywhere near full grown, plus they grow as long as they live. So the really huge ones we find in the fossil record may have been centuries old at the time they got buried in the flood. At any rate, the average size of a dinosaur, believe it or not, is somewhere between a large dog and a small horse. Most of them weren't big. The big ones were famous because they got so big, but most of them weren't that big. And even the big ones, if you take young ones, would easily fit aboard the ark. Now, predictions. If this is true, what would we expect? We would expect that after the flood, we would see evidence of men and dinosaurs coexisting in biblical history, in secular history, in archaeological evidence, and in forensic evidence from dinosaur bones, though they did not go extinct millions of years ago. Well, let's take a look first at biblical history. Job chapter 40, verses 15 through 19. Here, God is calling to Job's attention his, greatest, his greatness through the things he has created. And God points to the greatest animal of the animal kingdom, the biggest, most powerful animal, the behemoth, which in Hebrew means a big, monstrous animal. He says to Job, look at the behemoth, which I made along with you, and which feeds on grass like an ox, what strength he has in his loins, what power in the muscles of his belly. His tail sways like a cedar. The sinews of his thighs are close-knit. His bones are tubes of bronze, his limbs like rods of iron. He ranks first among the works of God. In the margin of your Bible, some say, well, it was a crocodile, elephant, or hippopotamus. You know, crocodiles don't eat grass like an ox. And elephants and hippopotamus don't have a tail as big as a cedar tree. And they don't have bones as strong as iron. And they don't rank first the preeminent, biggest, most powerful land-dwelling animal that God ever made. I think it's describing a sauropod dinosaur. Now, when we look at the posterior of the elephant and the hippopotamus, my goodness, what pathetic examples of tails. <laughs> I think if God was talking about them, he would have said this, Behold, Job, he moveth his tail like a twig. <laughs> but when he talks about this, he'd say, Hey, that's like a cedar tree. So, as the old proverb says, If it looks like a duck, quacks like a duck, walks like a duck, flies like a duck, it's most likely a duck. In this case, behemoth is most likely a sauropod dinosaur alive in the days of Job after the flood. Now, the very next chapter, Job chapter 41, God calls to Job's attention the greatest reptile of the sea, the Leviathan, okay? Now, contrary to what some people think, Leviathan is not an annual marathon run only by the tribe of Levi. Okay? <clears throat> Wrong idea. Leviathan was an awesome aquatic reptile that had such thick, scaly armor, the Bible says no weapon of man could penetrate it. No spear, no arrow, no harpoon. Impervious to human attack. Yet you read in the margin of your Bible some speculations. Maybe Leviathan was a whirlpool, or a whale, or a crocodile. None of which fits the description. You know, whirlpools don't have scales and teeth. Whales don't have scales. And crocodiles have been killed with simple weapons like spears for thousands of years. Notice what God says. Can you pull in Leviathan with a fish hook? Any hope of subduing him is false. The mere sight of him is overpowering. His sneezing throws out flashes of light. His eyes are like the rays of dawn. Firebrands stream from his mouth. Sparks of fire shoot out. Smoke pours from his nostrils. His breath sets coals ablaze and flames dart from his mouth. Sound like anything we've heard of in antiquity? Fire-breathing dragon. All these stories from antiquity of dragons that sound like dinosaurs, some of which could breathe out fire. Of course, God can make anything. I believe this is probably one of these big 
marine reptiles, mosasaurus or chronosaurus, with glands to produce flammable chemicals and electrical spark for ignition, you have a flamethrower. Of course, God can do that. We have that technology in the uh, electrical field. Some people thought it was too shocking when it was first reported. But uh, <coughs> God can do that type of technology. In fact, God can even make a dragon, so to speak, of the insect world. It's called the bombardier beetle. The bombardier beetle has a complex chemical factory that produces reactive chemicals, hydrogen peroxide and hydroquinone, held inert until it's squirted into a combustion chamber and activating an enzyme then causes enormous, almost instantaneous increase in heat and pressure that explodes at a twin cannon in his rear end right in the face of any predator coming after him. <coughs> he can shoot up to 30 times repeatedly, boom, boom, boom.